What's up, everybody? <laughs> this is uh, Scott and myself. Uh, my name is Dylan. What's up? How's everybody doing? We're just doing some street preaching here, uh, sharing the gospel of Jesus and our yeah. God Jesus signs. The most important question you could ask yourself is who's Jesus to you? Is he a liar? Is he a lunatic? Or is he Lord? Either Jesus is Lord of all or he's not Lord at all in your life. You kind of think about it, Jesus, Jesus is definitely not a liar. But he's definitely a lunatic and he's definitely Lord. Now, don't get like, you know, don't be a hating on, on me when I say, what do you mean Jesus is a lunatic? Well, you see, it kind of reminds me of uh, a verse in, in Romans to where uh, Paul says that uh, what is wise to God is foolishness to the world. But that's why that's why God, you know, uses simple things and uses simple truth to completely confound the wisdom of the world. Which, let's be honest, um, ever heard the expression, that's just bad advice? Well, if you take advice from someone who obviously doesn't know what they're talking about, they're not really, that's advice you shouldn't be listening to. Well, it's the same thing with the world. And people of the world think Jesus is a lunatic, but he's not. He's Lord, he's Savior, he's our everything. Amen, amen, brother. Yes, sir. That's the truth. That's the truth. Getting his sword out. Well, the Bible is like a two edged sword, mm -hmm. able to divide spirit and flesh. Oh, yeah, yep. Hebrews 4 throws says, For the word of God is alive and active and sharper than any double edged sword, pierced as far as joints and marrow, soul and spirit, and is able to distinguish the true thoughts and intentions of your heart. Amen. You know that by memory. That's oh, awesome. yeah, yep. One of my favorite verses. Heck yeah. They got a gospel trap here too. Heaven or hell? Which yeah. one will you choose? I don't know, man. Hell, hell doesn't sound too good to me. Oh, no. Nope. Not either. Oh. If you think the summer months are hot, you know, you haven't experienced nothing yet. Yeah. Plus, they don't have steak dinners or pizza in hell. Yeah. It's stop, drop, or roll. It doesn't work in hell. No, sir, it doesn't, does it? <laughs> in heaven, is not a ghost-like foggy atmosphere with disembodied spirits float around heaven. It's real as the earth. As Jesus told his disciples, I go and prepare a place for you. And Paul taught that Christians would have new and perishable bodies. Again, contrary to many popular beliefs, heaven is not dual. The things that are killed towards on earth, selfishness, hatred, death, all will be gone. And one day there will be a place where there will be no more tears, no more sorrow, no more pain, no more agony, no more death. And what a beautiful place that will be when we're, we see Jesus face to face. And hell is just the opposite, you know? There's not going to be any parties in hell. We're not going to just be around our drinking buddies. But hell will be an awful place where we will be totally isolated and separated from all that is loving. And God is love, as First John proclaims. Exactly. Something else really to think about hell if you think about it. Um, I don't know if any of, you, any of you guys are like Star Wars fans, right? But uh, something that comes to mind is uh, a quote from Count Dooku in episode two, Attack the Clones, where he says, treachery is the way of the Sith. So a lot of times when it comes to evil, the kingdom of hell, oftentimes how they get people is they'll make promises, promises of power, promises of riches, promises of fame, that if you just do this for Satan, um, if you just do what he wants, or if you just go your own way and, and just follow the selfishness of the heart, you'll get everything you want. But here's the thing about about the kingdom of darkness. Once they get what they want from you, they discard you. And the reason is because there is no love in hell. All they do is hate. Satan hates even the ones who are 
under his authority. He hates all of the demonic princes and all the other fallen angels and other spiritual forces that are aligned with them. He hates them all and they hate each other. The only thing that unites them is their hatred for God and their hatred for us. So in truth, when you think about following the devil, he's a liar and anything he promised you, he's not going to keep it. Once he gets what he wants from you, you're done. Whether, and, and also all the traps of this world are never worth it, drugs, and, uh, all, all the other things that are out there. Um, don't fall for it, guys, because it's all just meant to distract you, and it doesn't give you an identity. Our identity is in Christ. Amen, amen. And Satan is the author of fear. You know, God tells us in his word that he hasn't given us a spirit of fear, but power, love, and the sound mind, and that God's perfect love casts out all fear. So he also tells us in his word, do not be afraid or discouraged for the Lord your God is with you wherever you may go. Amen, Scott, that was beautiful. Mm -hmm. Also, um, the fear of, uh, as uh, Solomon says in Proverbs, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Now fear doesn't mean like, oh my gosh. Uh, ah, yeah. Ah. Like, oh my gosh, if I uh, go out and, uh, to this party or if I go out to this comic con or I go out to this event that my parents don't want me to go out to, um, if I, if I, uh, I'm not gonna go because I'm afraid of uh, getting caught by my parents and getting grounded. God's not like, as the Supreme Being, that's not his heart. That's not his intentions for us. The fear of the Lord is where we love God so much that we wouldn't want to do anything to hurt him or to displease him. Or really to, to hurt others, right? Like, you want to do the right thing. And that's uh, the Spirit of God transforming your heart to, to make you more like God, His nature. Doing away with the sin nature inside of us. That's what Christ does for us through the transformation of the Holy Spirit. Amen, amen, yes, brother. sir. And I know, and I remember when God saved me to the uttermost when I was 16 years old, my dad passed away of cancer. Wow. And, you know, I had questions about what happens after life, what happens when somebody dies. And I was invited to a youth group and, you know, several times and every time I just said, no, no, no. Until one time I finally submitted and I went to the youth group and I heard the gospel. I heard the good news of Jesus Christ that he went to the cross and he died for my sins. And three days later, he rose from the dead and he defeated death. And he's seated at the right hand of the Father yeah. in glory. And he has sent me the Comforter, the Holy Spirit, as a guide. And I remember hearing the gospel and the good news of Jesus Christ and all that he's done for me. And I traded my sorrow for his joy. I traded my hell for his heaven. I traded my sin for his Amen. forgiveness. And he changed me from the inside out. And I've never been the same since. Kind of reminds me one time of what... Uh... Billy Graham oftentimes would say in his crusades. For those of you who don't know, Billy Graham was a really famous, uh, actually authentic televangelist who lived um, uh, the early, uh, well, the late 1900s and uh, passed away a couple years ago. But he, he was most famous in the 50s through the 70s doing his Billy Graham crusades. But oftentimes something Billy Graham would often say in his crusades is the greatest evidence of God out there, even though God does do miracles, and then of course we have like the empty tomb, uh, and then of course we have historians that uh, authenticate that there is an empty tomb that Jesus existed, Jesus really was resurrected. He oftentimes said that the greatest evidence to the everyday man, the everyday common person, is the profound heart change that comes through the transformation of Christ when you accept Him. And by accepting Him, that doesn't just mean pray a prayer, oh, God just forgives me, I just continue doing what I want. No, uh, that what that means is you lay down everything to God and you say, God, I know that I've, I've done messed up, but here I am. I don't have the words to say, so I'm just going to pray the only prayer I, I know how to pray. And that's just simply, hey, what's up, man? How you doing? Yeah, pretty good, bro. Spreading the good news. But, uh, so anyway, as I was, sorry, uh, what that means is uh, accepting Christ, just giving him your sin, sincerely, genuinely saying, I'm sorry, Lord, and just watch how God not only forgives you, but transforms you. 
and it's not a mistake that you're watching this video right now and you could have a place in paradise with God you can go to heaven and not suffer in hell for all eternity if you just come to him and lay down your sin at his altar of grace he will forgive you and he will receive you as his child you could be a child of the king of kings and the lord of lords if you submit to him today if you come to him today is your day of salvation today is it if you humble yourself and come to him lay down all your sins and ask for his forgiveness you can receive this great salvation oh, yeah. that god offers everybody for it didn't say for god so loved some of the world it said for god so loved the world oh. and that includes everybody including you the very person who's watching this video right now oh yeah So also something to keep in mind, everybody, is that, yeah, God definitely loves everyone, all people. But, you know, God also has, like, a special type of love that he created for you, and he didn't create for anyone else. So oftentimes I've heard people who have actually either experienced Christ in, like, a near-death experience or actually have felt God's presence say that they were so wrapped by the love of God, it felt like, even though they knew God loved everyone it felt like in that very moment it was as if god loved them and only them so always remember everybody that god created a special love just for you and it's still there even if you don't know him even if you're just like nah um i've sinned too much and if there is a god god certainly wouldn't love someone like me god god's not like humans where humans have conditions right like i'll love you if you love me or quid pro quo pro I'll do this for you if you do it for me. God says, I love you despite everything you've ever done. I'm not ashamed of you, and I want you to know me. And God also has a steadfast love. You know, it's ongoing for all eternity. He doesn't just love you when you're at your best, but he also loves you when you're at your worst. Oh. And there's nothing we can do to make God love us any less, but there's also nothing we can do to make God love us any more. He loves us just as we are and however we come to him. But he also requires fruits of repentance too, to come to him, lay down our sin at the altar of his feet. Yeah, so something to always remember about grace, which is just simply God's not only love towards you, but also God's ability to do something about the sin in our lives, right? It's not something we can do. Uh, oftentimes, it's something I hear people say um, uh, about uh, someone who's addicted to things like alcohol or, or drugs or these other things is that, well, uh, people can't change them. They have to change themselves. But actually, if you think about it, not even they can change themselves. The only way that we are changed is if, yeah, we do our part by meeting God where he's at, but really it's God who meets us first. And, we, and of course, we gotta, we gotta do our part and choose God. But at the end of the day, not even we can change ourselves. It's only God who can change us. And that can only be done as Scott said, so please. It is also called responsible grace. The ability to respond, that's how I would define responsibility. Yeah. God has given us this free will to respond to the grace that He has given us. Exactly. You see, how we, how we see God actually making a difference in the world, a lot of times, yeah, God does both things like He did the Old Testament, like He did the New Testament. But a lot oh, yeah, of times, miracles and healings. Exactly, man. But a lot of times, God is mainly behind the scenes, and it's God actually enabling you to be able to make a decision in the first place through the power of the Spirit, the Spirit going before you, bringing an awareness to, to the existence of God. The fact that there is sin and like, we feel guilty about it, and that's the conviction of the Spirit is upon us, right? And, and that's just God choosing to do something about it. God goes to us first, and then we respond to us. Scott, I like how you said responsible grace. Right? That was good. You know who you are in the Bible church? Who you are in the Oh, yeah, yeah. He teaches at the National Theology Center. Yeah, that was a good place. Was it really? That is awesome. Responsible grace. 
That's kind of like an easier way to explain the grooving to grace of God if you think about it. Oh yeah, the grace that comes before. Yeah, the grace that comes before. We haven't gotten any haters. That's a good thing. Actually, we've gotten a lot of support. I'm surprised by that. Oh yeah. Praise God. Also, another thing I want to say is, um, Oh, I'm sorry, Scott. I, I don't want to steal your thunder. Oh, no. You want to say something? Like that? No, go for it. Sure? Okay, okay. Good. Yeah, I appreciate you, bro. So, uh, I mean, one final thing I think that's like on my heart. Uh, I feel like this goes more towards the church than, uh, than uh, people who don't know the Lord. But I feel like one of the reasons why God is not moving as much in the world as we want him to is because the church isn't exactly in order like it should be. Now, when I say the church, I'm not talking about your local church, but rather as a body, I feel like our division makes us defenseless. You know, I feel like a lot of times as Christians, we're so busy despising and devouring each other that we're not focusing on what's most important, that's the work of God. You know, Scott and I might be um, of the, in the same denomination, you know, Church of the Nazarene, but yeah, different denominations. Yeah, there are different denominations too. And you know what? Even if Scott was in a different denomination, well, technically he is somewhat. Yeah. But uh, you know, it doesn't matter what denomination or what label we put on our door, right? Yeah. If we're all brothers and sisters of Amen, Christ, brother. then uh, we should come together and yeah. be doing this type of stuff. When somebody asks me what I am, I don't tell them I'm Nazarene. I don't tell them I'm true to God. I tell them I'm Christian. Oh. You no, know, I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. Yes, sir. I want to read something from John chapter 3 to yeah, share it man John chapter 3 the gospel of John talks about the new birth there's a man at the Pharisees named Nicodemus a ruler of the Jews this man came to Jesus by night and said to him rabbi we know that you are a teacher from God and no one can do these signs unless you do them unless God is with them Jesus answered and said most assuredly I say to you Unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Oh. Woo! Good stuff there. That is. You know, we have to be born again, and that's a phrase we don't hear in the church too much yeah, anymore. Yeah, we it's don't. Born again, yeah. what's that? Yeah, what's that? How can you come out of your mother's room and pray a second time? Yeah. You know? But being spiritually born again is when we become dead to our sin and alive in Christ. We bury ourselves and we are risen with him as the scriptures say you know the old is gone and new has come we become a new creation in jesus christ the old is passed away it's done with it's buried it's dead and we're yes, resurrected sir. to new life yes sir Woo! that'll preach yeah, i will bro keep it keep it on keep it on now when we talk about rebirth right it's a big we, we get it for a lot of people, because like the church doesn't really preach a lot of it today, that uh, it's really not, it might be like something that kind of confuses you. To, to, to be born again simply means that you go from how you were to now you are now something new. When we were born, right, we all were born with something that's called a sin nature. And that sin nature is what causes us to sin. Like for example, a two year old, right if you take away their toy say there's another two-year-old that comes and just steals their toy what's their reaction gonna be scott they're gonna cry and yeah. whine and exactly and, moan. and they're gonna throw punches right they're gonna yeah. want to throw hands well that's the first instinct of, of people because sin is in our life yeah. and we commit choices so that's something that's with us ever since we were born it's our nature but Go Dylan, do we have to wait until january 1st when the new year begins to be born new again oh bro yeah totally we got to make our new year's resolution <laughs> no no you can do it right here right now at any, any time, time. Wow. Boom. yeah bro i know a simple concept oh, awesome. boom i know right gosh yeah you should do it you should do it totally totally um but to be born again just, just simply means going from how you are right now right to letting god create you how he created you to be and that's something that happens when you accept Christ, ask him into your heart, and once you ask him into your heart, the Holy Spirit comes inside of you and transforms you, and it's an ongoing process. No one's perfect. We're not made perfect until we go to heaven, but through Amen. God's transforming uh, grace, or God's 
spirit transforming us to be more like God's nature, how he wants us to be. Yeah, we're being yeah. perfected, but we're not perfect. Exactly, we're being perfected, but not perfect. Uh, we won't talk about entire sanctification today. That, that'll be another, another thing in the future. But always remember, everybody, God does love you. And oh, yeah. yeah. God, God is a God of justice. And when it, when it reaches the point he has to judge, he will. You know, he, he will come in and he will dish out just desserts. But that's not God's heart. God doesn't desire to do that. But he will if he has to. But you know what? You, you can be on God's team. You can choose forgiveness. You don't have to side with evil. You don't have to do bad stuff. You don't have to live in the sin that captures your heart and uh, leaves you in like a prison. You, you don't have to be in that state. Yeah. And I love what Philippians chapter 2, starting at verse 5, it says, Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus, yeah. who being in the form of God did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Whoa. Very good, Scott, very oh, yeah. good. Good word. Good. I love the book of Philippians. All of it is good, you know, from oh, Genesis really? to Revelation. Isn't it called the book of joy? Philippians? <laughs> oh, yeah, yep. yeah. The joy and consultation. Oh, yeah. Still no haters. That's good. Oh, yeah. Well, Thank you, Lord. Yeah. yeah. Not going to lie, we were actually scared to do this. Um, Earlier, we were like searching out spots. We're like, God, where do we go? And yeah. It's like every, everywhere was empty. We, we've been in so many different places in Salon, yeah, just checking and scoping out the land. And this was actually the first place that we came to, and the Lord directed us back to this path. Yeah. Thank the Lord. Yep, praise Him. All glory to Him. Exactly. You know, Scott and I, we're, we're not out here with an agenda. You know, we're, we're not like politicians looking to get your money, oh, looking no. to get your vote, looking to get something. Uh, from you guys. We're just here. We're two simple men with a simple mission, sharing the joy, love, and transformation of the Lord. Yep. That's it. And you don't have to be a pastor or a missionary to share the gospel. Exactly. You know, the Great Commission is for every Christian. You know, everybody who's a believer in Christ has that call and command to the Great Commission to share the gospel, to share the good news. As First Peter says, always be prepared to give an answer for the hope that you have in Jesus Christ. Amen. It's awesome how the Holy Spirit brings to remembrance certain scriptures. Yeah, exactly at the right time. He just he brings them out. You don't, you're like, how did that happen? <laughs> just boom. Yep, boom. Good job, Scott. Oh, all the Holy Spirit, all glory to Him. Yes, sir. All, all, thank you, Lord. Yep, praise Him. Thank you, God, the Holy Spirit, and God the Father, and Jesus, for being with us today. And all of you watching this. Yeah. And if you feel discouraged, down and out, depressed, I want to share with you, you know, that you can have hope in Jesus Christ. He hears your prayers, and there's nothing we can do to separate ourselves from the love of God. He loves you regardless, whether you feel depressed and sorrowful and, and down and out. And just remember that God loves you. He cares for you like no one else does, and you can come to Him with all your burdens, with all your troubles, with all your sorrows, Absolutely. and He will lift you up. You know, there's a lot of things out there in the world today that can make us feel good. Like, sure, I can go ahead and watch a movie. I'm going to the movies tonight to watch Willy Wonka if I'm not hanging out with my friends. And, and that'll bring, sure, joy and laughter and, and fun. But you know what? Nothing can ever compare to a one-time experience with God even though it's one time, it lasts for a lifetime. There's nothing that can compare to the love of God and the profound experience of God. Yep. In the peace of God, the peace that surpasses all understanding. understanding. Oh. No, there's two different pieces. There's the peace of God and there's the peace with God. The peace is with God is, you know, before we came to know Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we were considered enemies 
of the cross. We were considered enemies of God. But as soon as we make that commitment to Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we become friends of God and we're no longer enemies of the cross. And the peace of God is this peace, this overwhelming joy and peace that God gives us in our tribulations, in our trials, in our sufferings. This peace that surpasses all understanding. Yeah. Amen. Yep. Preach it, Scott. Yeah, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We need to, when we're down and out, we need to, you know, praise through for our breakthrough. You know, praise through through our struggles. And just praise Him until the storm passes by. Absolutely. Now, when we say enemies of God, you know, we're not saying, you know, it's like uh, you're out in the battlefield and you are raising a gun ready to try and shoot angels or shoot Christians or you're spreading hate. No, what we mean is that because of that sin that separates us from God, we do things that break God's law, you know, that break God's moral code. Everyone has a moral code that they follow, but most of us, let's be honest, Scott, well, whose moral code do they follow? Yeah, not God's. Yeah, the, not God's. We the follow world. our own. Exactly. And it said in the scripture that Satan is the god of this world. So we're either following God or we're following the God of this world exactly. unknowingly, you know, sometimes. And that's true. Like, people can be living deception every day and not even know it. And it really isn't until the conviction of Christ comes yeah. that you realize, oh, wait, God is real and I done messed up yeah. and I'm breaking and, God's standard. And Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But yeah. God comes to give you life and to give you life that's full, that's abundantly, you know, that's overflowing. Exactly. Now, there are definitely some people out there that are enemies of God, you know, people who enjoy killing, people who enjoy doing really messed up things and yeah. they want nothing to do with God. Oh, yeah. But we realize that's a, not the majority of people. Yeah. The majority of people, right, are, are looking... They're looking for love and they're looking for truth in just the wrong places. Yeah. And we've got to remember, too, that our fight isn't against flesh and blood, but about and against the principalities and powers exactly. of this dark world. Exactly. So somebody who might be following Satan, you know, they're not our enemy, but it's the force. It's the demonic demons that have influence over their lives that are causing them to do these certain things. That's who our true enemy is. Exactly. And uh, let, me, let me ask you this, not, not to get political, right? But let me ask you, do you, do you trust the government right now? Do you, do you feel like you can trust um, how, the systems that are in place right now? Do you trust your bank to have your back? Do you trust, um, I don't know, just most things to have your back? The answer probably is no. Yeah, but oh, it's not yeah. about the donkey or the elephant. It's all about the blood of the lamb. Exactly. And the word of his testimony. Exactly. But the reason why you don't trust those things, right, is because man-made systems are inspired by the dark. Now, I'm not saying government is bad. Obviously, government is necessary. But, like, a lot of things that happen behind the scenes of the world, corruption and darkness and systems that right now are corrupted, that's because of what, um, you know, my good friend here was talking about, Scott was talking about, that the enemy is behind all of those things. So the fact that those things exist, right, the fact that all the darkness we see in the world is happening right now is proof that the spiritual realm is real and it's manifesting into the physical. Amen, 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 Dylan. Yes, sir. Yeah, no haters yet, huh? Yeah, no haters, woo! <laughs> That'll happen someday. Oh, I forgot Chevys have those those features that uh, when you're at a stop sign or a red light, they it shuts the car off, and then oh, yeah? when you turn on the or when you like press down on the gas pedal, then it turns oh, it back on. Yeah. 
hey, thank you everybody for joining us. Yeah. Um, God bless. Merry Christmas. And we pray that uh, this touches your heart. And yeah. that God just is using us to inspire all of you guys. Whether yeah. you know Christ or you don't. So, yeah. We pray, pray, dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I pray, Lord, yeah. that you would touch everybody that's watching this video, Lord, yes, God, Lord. that they will receive you as Christ and Lord, and if they're already a follower of Jesus, pray, Lord God, I pray, Lord God, that they would grow in spiritual maturity to the fullness of who you are, Lord, that their identity be found in Christ and not in any political systems or, or a sexual orientation, but in you alone, and I pray that's your name, Jesus, name we pray, amen. Amen.